So let's just for a second think about what stream processing really means. I, I like to talk about things by way of analogy. So if we think about it in a Kafka world, data flows through our topics. If I analogize all the way back to 1973, when Doug McElroy added pipes to the Unix operating system, we can think of this in a similar way, actually. So back in a you know, pipe-driven world, what would we do? We'd get some data, we'd pass it to another process, we'd do something to it, we'd pass it to another process, work on that data again, and then end up with it being somewhere, probably on the standard out of whatever process we were running. So in the Kafka world, we can think of the Connect API being the thing that you use to pull your data from other places before it goes into this chain of processing that's separated by our pipes, which are Kafka topics. And then at the end of this sequence of processing, perhaps that data lands in another system. Maybe we land it in HDFS or S3 for archival purposes, or we land it in Mongo or Couch so we can write some dashboard or do quick lookups against it, and so on. But what happens in the middle is the interesting part, right? This is where we have our processes that take one or more streams of data, operate on them, which is essentially a transformation, pass it through a topic to the next transformation, and so on through some arbitrary chain of this processing. So that's really what we mean when we talk about stream processing. So we've been working for a little while now in the Apache community and a confluent on this stream processing idea. Maybe a little over a year ago, we had the first release of the Kafka Streams API, which is this Java DSL that allows you to manipulate streams in code and write functions that operate on the stream of records flowing by you as a whole thing. And it's gradually evolved over time to have many more capabilities. And what we've heard loud and clear, I think, from the community of folks using this is, that's great, but maybe I'm not the world's strongest Java programmer. Or maybe that's a little bit complex. I need to get down into some really esoteric details of how to manage window change log, event streams, blah, blah, blah. Can we make this a little bit easier? And so because one of my personal philosophies is that life is all about choices, right? If you don't know me, I am a big sucker for really good macaroons, by the way. Um, coffee and lemon are my favorite flavors, if anybody's stepping out afterwards. And the same kind of choices follow us when we're making architectural and technology decisions, right? There's this age-old trade-off when we're thinking about what tools or libraries or APIs to select between the flexibility to do whatever I like on one end versus simplicity and speed on the other end of the spectrum. And in the Kafka world, it looks a little bit like this. If I want to do absolutely anything I can imagine with records flowing through Kafka, I can use the consumer and producer API to do that. It allows me to basically get messages and put messages. That's pretty darn simple, I think you'll agree. The Kafka Streams API is a little bit, well, it's a lot higher level. Right? It introduces a more functional programming paradigm where you get to call functions like map or filter, and the arguments to those functions are themselves functions. Right? You pass a function to be evaluated against a stream of data. And that's where that slightly esoteric line of thinking that I was talking about comes in. And what we're going to talk about today is KSQL, which is way over on the side of the spectrum here. It actually is built out of Kafka streams under the hood. Uh, and it provides a much more familiar and yet somewhat more restricted ability to process streams of data. We're going to walk through several examples of that. But before we do, I just want to call out you know, the giants upon whose distributed shoulders we are standing here. Um, I think we heard a very similar line in one of the keynotes this morning. Uh, and all this says is, because we have built this KSQL on top of the Kafka Streams library, which is built on the basic, simple, effective primitives that Kafka itself offers, like for how to coordinate work across a cluster of machines, how to know when members of a group join and leave, how to distribute work amongst members of a cluster, how to deal with processing records which may turn up out of sequence in time. Maybe those records were sent from a mobile device or something that arrived late because I was on the plane. All these strong capabilities are inherited from Kafka itself. And our goal is to make them accessible and easy for you guys to use. So where would this help me? All right. This is probably anybody here doing ETL with their Kafka. Use it as a data pipeline. That's probably 20% of people. Right? So if you have, for example, um, a customer master record, right? you receive updates of information about a customer all day continuously through your various systems, 
Maybe you have a customer profile website. The user changes his email address. The user's on your e-commerce site. They're ordering something, right? You have some offline activity that generates a record in a system about their payment history. If you want this continuously updated picture of your customer to be maintained, streaming ETL is effectively a great way to do that. Likewise, if you have these streams of real-time data going by, maybe you like to do log processing and ingest via Kafka. Can I get a quick show of hands for that? Is that a popular? Nobody likes that, okay. We'll skip over that then, right? The other thing actually I've, I found and we found in the office when we've been working with KSQL is that the things you think you already know how to do with Kafka become much simpler, like a little one-liner in KSQL. So it's also a way to think, I may be an experienced practitioner, but this can actually save me a lot of time. So I called out a couple examples here, right? I have this topic. I wish it had twice, I had a copy of it with twice as many partitions and a different key. That's, a, that's one line of KSQL to create that. On the flip side, you know, there are some instances where that simplicity versus flexibility of KSQL makes it not a great fit, all right? So if you're thinking, when I say KSQL, you think, ah, oh, SQL, business intelligence tool. Not an awesome fit because for a start, most business intelligence tools require a finite result set. We're operating in a streaming data world, right? When you issue a KSQL query, it never ends unless you stop it. And so that result set keeps on coming and coming and coming as fast as your fire hose will run. So if you're trying to put this in Tableau, that's, that's not a great choice. Also, you know, data in Kafka, because it is built on that primitive structure of the log that Nayas did such a great job of recapping this morning, right? It is strictly ordered in a particular sequence, right? We don't really do random access very well in Kafka. We all know that it's blazing speed comes from sequential processing of data. So seeking backwards and forwards via some index structure or something is also not a sweet spot, right, of what we can do in the streaming transformation world. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. And actually, as we're talking about, you know, how the word SQL here might make you jump to certain conclusions about what this is for and what it's good at and what it's not good at. Thank you for laughing at my joke, sir, in the front row. Um, there's some super important things to call out about what doing SQL against a stream of data means. 